every day we're being inundated with information from everywhere. Wear a face mask, don't wear a face mask. It's stupid. The bottom line is you know who doesn't know what the hell they're doing. They're highly incompetent and they were put in place to be just that. Because in fact, who will be deposed? And that was all predetermined before all this began. You see, this was the first time in the history of the earth that national leaders decided to hand over the reins over major decisions of their nations to you know who. Because the world was just too complicated and convoluted for our nations to figure out on its own. We had become so intertwined that we needed to have a single authority headed by a guy who's not even a doctor, but secondly, who has a completely horrible record when it comes to medical care in his own country. He's been under scrutiny and he's known to be corrupt. Yet, our national leaders, and I don't care what country you're in, all decided that somebody else was gonna make the decision for them. It's unbelievable, but that was what was decided. Now, the NWO knew exactly that that would be an absolute failure as they knew that the CPP virus would perpetuate itself all over the world and that China would push to not be singled out and that who would actually betray their role. It was all pre-planned. Because the end game, as I've been saying for months in my video, is a global government. This is what they're after. Of course, that pressure from China ended up having our borders open and people traveling from China each day into Vancouver, Toronto, no temperature checks, no nothing in the middle of the pandemic. It's crazy. It's very clear that the Trudeau government willed us into this situation. They put up signs at the airport. They could have stopped it, but they decided they wouldn't do that. And instead they decided to blow it up because the idea was to blow up our economy and our way of life in accordance with Agenda 2030 goals. This has been a plan. And the CCP virus, merely the trigger to it all. Now, of course, it doesn't matter where you live. We've all discovered that this is nothing more than a seasonal flu that can kill people. It can. But when it comes down to it, it's not even close to the threat of the seasonal flu. Because, you see, they never really had an accurate count of the flu. And even according to the numbers that they do have, it's a piddle, a drop in a bucket. In Saskatchewan, I'm preparing to uh, do a access to information because I want to know how all those deaths that they keep coming up with occurred. <laughs> Particularly since there's basically no hospitalizations, the hospitalizations have actually remained the same. So I'm assuming they came from nursing homes, but they're not disclosing that information. They're trying to artificially keep us into a state of emergency that is not needed because they're locking us down in order that they secure all the changes. 
Now these changes aren't going to end because what's happening now is we are being infiltrated by the deep left. Here, even in my little city of Regina. Until I started looking into this, I had seen some interesting changes over the years. Particularly on my walks around our legislature, because I did that almost every day. And I saw a change of the guard about two years ago. In fact, there really was no guard before that. And then all of a sudden, there was. What I always suggest you do, and it's a little game I've played for years, um, whenever I'm in a new city, and I love a lot of American cities, uh, because they're squares or presidential palaces are a very interesting place to go and observe because you, you start to understand what's at work below the ethers. And I suggest you go do that. Go to your legislature. Go to your city hall. Watch. In any case, what I've learned in all of these years and these expeditions I've taken and chasing the war in Central America and what confuses most people is the fact of this left and right, right and left. <laughs> it was about, actually when I was in El Salvador a few years ago, that any delusion I had of the left being better or that it was noble, I guess, was when I saw Daniel Ortega go from a leftist Sandinista to a rightist totalitarian dictator, I saw his government being the next country over and then hearing stories from these travelers coming from Nicaragua during this time that he was perpetuating the very same thing the Contras were doing many moons ago. I remember I was in Nicaragua for an election. <laughs> they loved Daniel Ortega. He was the savior of the people. But true colors come out over time. And in fact, the communist nature, fascist nature emerged we keep getting ourselves caught up in left and right, fascism, communism, quite honestly, same thing, <laughs> same principle. They come up with all of this to confuse the hell out of us. But at the end of the day, the battle is against free will right now and state control. And Agenda 2030 is all about state control. I have been under censorship <laughs> shadow band on Instagram since I started the solar radiation management stuff. And that was pretty wild because Facebook was pretty much leaving me alone. But Instagram, not so much. In fact, blocking me out and blacking out my posts. On YouTube, I'm shadow banned. So what I did was I thought, okay, you know, I can play. And I saw David Icke on BitChute. And I thought, okay, if, if they shut down his channel and let him go on BitChute, uh, I should do that. So I did. I spent close to a week and a half loading up every video I had. And it was a long process, believe me. I had to do fresh cover photos. I had to dig through the photos, pull it all out because it's a different format. It was a lot of work. And I was loading them up. And it was about my 10th video that I realized that I might be getting censored. And I did mention that on my social media. So I kept doing it and loading and loading and loading. And I should have about 80 videos up there. And right now I've got about 70, 60. In any case, there are quite a few that won't load. Um, or just downright get wiped out. It'll take me six times to load up and it won't stick. 
I've worked it through my phone. I've worked it through my computer. And then I finally do get it up. So, you know, this is a long process, right? <laughs> and slightly frustrating. And it finally gets up there. So what, what happens on BitChute? It, it, it gets to a phase where it goes process and publish. And if it's fluffy and stupid, my material, which really isn't, but that goes up right away. <laughs> but the more it mentions the New World Order, Agenda 2030, these are the videos that have problems. And the ones that won't load, and now that I have been at this for a month and a half and I've watched and taken note of what hasn't loaded, this is what won't load. And that is anything to do with the circular economy, because I know that's to come. That's where everybody is gonna be paying 57% income tax and we are going to be slaves to the communists. The World Economic Forum. When they're mentioned, or the COVID action plan, I have a video called The Wicked Web of the New Order that won't load up. They actually literally deleted it, and not just once, but three times. <laughs> right now, I've got two in process since last night. Now, what I have discovered about BitChute, just so everybody understands, is that, um, yes, apparently they'll host all sorts of fascist Nazi stuff, um, trying to paint the right as fascist Nazis. What I've come to understand is that BitChute is actually a containment box. <laughs> Another one of those. And what it's designed to do is actually contain the right opinion. On August 6th of 2017, Alex Jones all of a sudden lost all his platforms, Infowars. And just like that, BitChute picked him up. And it was from that point on, because they only had a few people <laughs> on that site. And all of a sudden, everything that was getting banned over on YouTube was flipping to BitChute. And when I saw that piece this morning, I realized that, yes, in fact, that's exactly it. BitChute has been designed to paint a picture of conservatives, of the right, of common sense, of people who believe in ownership, that believe in their democratic rights and freedoms. BitChute has been created to make sure that that message is angry, to make sure that that message might be very forceful. They don't really want a message like mine, which actually expresses some common sense and discussion, smiles, laughter, and happiness even when we're not. They don't want that. Of course, when the lockdown protests all came about and what these Black Lives Matters and George Floyd protests have now completely shifted the focus off. So instead of our rights and freedoms, they've shifted the focus to defunding the police. We're infiltrated from all sides. And I can tell you, even here in my little town of Regina, where a protest group that I got involved with is infiltrated to the point where I actually left the group. Um, I, I just haven't participated because I was getting censored by a guy who I know is a complete plant. The same guy who brought the half-naked dancing fool to our protest the other day in order to discredit us. And then has tried to join and has joined the group that uh, me and another girl started. So here we are, infiltrated. 
Unbelievable. The fact is, is that communism has crept into our lives because of the new world order, because of Agenda 2030. Leave no one behind. This is all about making us all egalitarian, <laughs> all equal. And those people who want to defund the police, what they don't understand, <laughs> see, they don't understand the whole plan, right? This is the problem with all this. The plan is when money is shifted to community, what's going to happen is it's also going to shift into the social credit program, just like China. Yeah. See, without police, what's going to happen is that everything you do in your life is going to impact your score in society. So if you don't measure up, well, you just don't get to participate. And this is where this is actually all going. This isn't going to help people come up in life and in society. What it's going to do is keep them in their box, in their place. And that's exactly what the NWO is all about. There is only so much room for people with wealth. And they want it all. And they want to make sure the rest of us have no generational have no generational wealth to transfer that your kids will be just like a kid in Zimbabwe a bushman in the Kalahari desert but it's also going to make him like your kid see the thing is what's happening right now is there is no respect for history there is no respect for where we come from our roots what Agenda 2030 wants to do is literally destroy the past. People want to cull your elders. As we are all kept in an artificial state of emergency because it is only to keep us here so that they can continue on with their plans of literally gutting our economy making it so difficult for small business to operate that they have to go out of business and making us integrate into their little communist model. It's not noble at all. And it's actually sending us Westerners backwards in time. Because see, every game we had made in terms of rights and freedoms and all of that has literally been shifted back to the likes of Ethiopia. And that's just the reality. We're all starting out in an equal playing field. And it means that even women's rights that are being brought up with Agenda 2030, let's say in the Islamic nations, Latin America, African nations, What's happening is they're going to bring them forward, but they're going to pull us back to meet them, which means here in the West, we're going to be required to rescind everything we've ever gained. I'm saying no to it, but quite honestly, the majority in which I'm on the side of the majority, I do believe, I really do, they're afraid to speak out. Why are you so afraid to speak out? When they threw this whole race thing in with defund the police, they knew it's like Islamophobia. It is like any phobia. When you interject race, you mean it means that no one else can come in because you're going to be called a racist. I don't care. Call me a racist because everybody who knows me knows that I'm not because I didn't welcome <laughs> hundreds of immigrants in my home if I was a racist. And I can tell you, every immigrant I ever had here that I had lengthy discussions with left this type of garbage behind at home. And they were looking for a fresh life in a free country. We need to gather, my friends. But we have to go about this a different way because the typical protest model is no longer working. It's not. It's infiltrated. And those 
protesters that were across our countries the other last week, they were financed. You got to know it. The public perception manipulated to start buying in to this defund the police garbage <laughs> to expose us to androids and have artificial intelligence communicating with humans. It's unbelievable. If you're one of those people who are trusting the plan, I'm sorry, you've been had. <laughs>